In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a deck of cards in the Java programming language um, for general purpose use in any kind of future card game that you may want to build. The goal will be to make the code extremely readable, um, uh, very testable, and concise. I'm going to try to do this in about 150 lines of code or less. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to say create a new project. Java project. We're using the uh, Java 1.8 compiler. Let's get right into it. So it's a command line app and we're going to call it my card game. Okay, here we go. So first thing I'm going to do, we're, our, the, our whole um, module is going to only consist of two class files one called card and one called deck. So let's start by modeling the card abstraction. So we're going to call this card, it's a class, and we're going to say that a playing card consists of something called a rank. So if, uh, let's say private final rank rank and private final suit suit so we're talking about a standard uh, playing card that we're all familiar with um, and the rank is uh, maps to the you know the number like two three four dot 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 all the way to ten and then jack queen king ace and the suit corresponds of course to diamonds clubs hearts and spades Every card has a rank and a suit. Uh, of course, there are special cards like the Joker, uh, but we won't model the, any kind of special cards in this video. Okay, so we now have a rank and a suit, and um, notice the IDE is complaining, and it says it does not know what these things are. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, right in here, we're going to... Um, we're going to create the suit and the rank. So I'm going to declare it in enum inside of this class. It's going to be uh, called rank. And we're going to have two, three, four, five, six, oops, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, and ace. And we're also going to have a an enum for suit. Similarly, we're going to say diamonds, clubs, hearts, spade. Okay. And for the rank, what we're going to do in this enum is we're going to give it um, a numeric score value that we can use in our application. So for two, two maps to the number two, three maps to the number three, four maps to the number four, etc. So you get the idea here. Um, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And so we're going to say rank, final rank, rank value, and we're going to say this dot rank value equals rank value, and private final rank value. There. Oh, then we're going to give it a type. And rank value. Okay, great. And so now we will also introduce a private constructor for the card. So we're going to say private card final rank rank and final suit suit. And this dot rank is equal to rank. This dot suit is equal to suit. Okay, so we still have one compiler error here. We just fixed with a semicolon. So now um, we are on our way here to uh, creating our card class. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to have a map. Um, we're we're actually going to have a factory method that will return any given possible card that we can create. And when the application starts, we're actually going to um, initialize a map with all possible card values in it. And, and we can always retrieve any card from that card cache. Okay, if you've watched my series on chess, you've seen me do this with the chess tile. Okay, so what we're going to say, private final static map, and we're going to map a string, you'll see what that string represents, to a card. The, card, the string really is just going to represent the cards, um, you know, the nomenclature of the card, what we call it, like the ace of spades, if you will. So we're going to call it card cache equals, and we're going to have an init in a cache method. Okay. So here it's complaining. It's going to import map. And in, in this video, actually, I'm going to use all of the, <clears throat> all of the classes I'm going to use are built into the JDK. So you're not going to need any third party libraries. So uh, let's see if we can highlight the error here. Create this method. And uh, this method is going to be really uh, trivial. I'm going to say final map of string to card uh, hash is equal to new hash map. And we're going to say for final suit in all the enumerations suit values. And for final rank in all the enumerations, uh, in all of ranks, rank enumerations, rank values, or even values, uh, we're going to basically say cache.put, and it's going to be some string, which will leave us blank right now. I'm going to come back to this, and um, let's just say that we're going to use uh, the private constructor new card, uh, rank and suit. Okay, so that basically, and what we're going to come back to identify what this mapping is going to be. It's actually it's going to be really simple, and we're finally going to say return collections collections dot unmodifiable map. This is to make the map immutable, so you can't change it afterwards. No one. Can you you know mutate this map? And I've talked about the importance of uh, immutability in my uh, chess video series. So uh, we're going to return an immutable map there, right? And now we have this uh, constructor. And um, so first, let's override the toString method. Uh, public string toString. We're going to say return rank followed by of followed by suit. We should say actually just to be consistent, qualify this, right? That's very simple two string method there. And um, actually, probably would be a little bit better if we said return string dot format and uh, percent s of percent s, a little bit cleaner than what I had written. Rank and suit, right? This dot rank and this dot suit. Um, just need a comma there. Um, right, so now we have the start. Um, and Let's see how many lines of code have we written. So actually, let's go ahead and define what this this is going to be a method. The string is going to be a method called card key, and we're basically going to pass in the rank and the suit, and we're going to generate a key for that card, and it's going to be just like our two string method, right? So what we'll say is private static. Uh, 
um, string card key final rank rank and final suit suit and we will say return rank this dot rank plus of plus this dot suit so that's what this um Oh, actually, sorry, it's not this. It's a static method. So given some rank and some suit, just produce the string. That's the string that we're going to use to identify any given card and do the mapping up here in our init cache method, right? Fairly straightforward. So, um, right. So the only other, so now that we've modeled this, we've, we've modeled the card class up to some, to some extent. We'll come back to it. I want us to take a look at the deck class. I want us to create a deck of these things. So I'm going to say new Java class, and we're going to call it a deck. Right? <clears throat> and here, I'm going to use the abstraction I'm going to use as a stack. So our deck is going to be very simple. Private final stack built in class cards deck cards and we're going to say um, we're going to initialize uh, the deck right so what we're going to say is private stack of card and then deck and we're basically going to say deck cards dot push and we're going to push all of the cards that are available in um, our card class. So we're going to say card.getCard. This is going to be the method that we use, our factory method that we use to retrieve any given card. So we'll say rank and suit, right? Card.getCard rank and suit. Um, that's what init deck is going to do. Uh, but actually, in order to do that, we actually have to specify the rank in the suit, which I haven't done here. So I'm going to say final stack of card deck cards is equal to new stack. And for final card dot rank, actually, let's do card dot suit, suit and card values for final card dot rank, rank and card dot rank values and now what we're basically going to say is deck dot deck cards that's where we're going to do the push that I just mentioned here so now this is going to retrieve all you know, it's going to go through all the suits and all the ranks, and for each combination of them, we will retrieve that from the card cache, and we're going to push it onto our deck, right? That's where we're effectively going to get all 52 valid combination of cards. And then um, now we're going to say collections dot shuffle there's a nice handy method in there that'll shuffle a collection uh, deck cards so we don't have to implement this and return deck cards very easy okay and now we want to have a private constructor for our deck private deck and we're going to say this dot deck cards is equal to init deck, right? That will initialize our deck cards in the deck. The only thing that's missing is this get card method. And the most important thing in this class is going to be the public interface that we expose. So we're going to say public optional card deal. This is the method that we're going to expose. And what we're going to say is return if, if the deck cards are empty, then 
return optional of empty. Otherwise, return optional of this.deckcards.pop. So I have a little bit of explaining to do here. This optional is new in Java 8 um, and basically allows you to wrap an object that may or may not have a value. And so, you know, if the deck is empty, we don't have a card to return from it. What should we return in that case? Well, we could return null, um, but a cleaner approach here uh, would be a sort of a, a, yeah, a, a modern approach here would be to use this optional class. Um, it's still a bit of a code smell that we have to check if it's empty and do something, but it's, it's better than dealing with null. And otherwise, if, if, you know, if it's not empty, then we take the value off the top of the deck and we wrap it in an optional of. That's what this optional dot of does. It wraps the value in an optional. So that's all deal does. It's a very simplistic method. It's the only public method that we're going to expose on deck. So I think keeping things simple is one of my most important uh, rules when developing an API. So you can think of this um, deck of cards that you're creating as something that you can put out there and other people can uptake it for their application if they're making a blackjack game, for instance. And understanding uh, a card in a deck should be very easy for them. Okay, so now we have this, um, and we're probably going to need a main method, right? So let's just tag a main method on this deck class, even though it doesn't really have to belong on here. You could create a driver class to do that. Let's have a main method on here that we can use to do some simple tests. Public static void main string args, right? What we're going to say is final deck deck is equal to new deck. We're going to create a new deck and we're going to say that final in num cards to deal. Let's say it's 52, the entire deck. Okay. And then we're going to use uh, some Java 8 syntax. We're going to say int stream dot range. We're going to range over the numbers in a functional way, in an immutable way. We're going to range over the numbers um, 0 to 52, uh, exclusive, num cards to deal. Um, and we're going to say, we're going to range over them and we're for each one, we're going to say value system dot out dot print uh, deck dot deal. So really simple. We're going to basically call deck dot deal 52 times on our deck, and we should print out all of the values um, in a readable fashion. Now notice we still have a couple of minor compile errors that we have and that, that we should resolve. So let's look at uh, deck dot get card. We need to create on card a method called get card. So what we're going to need, this is going to be our public public um, card get card. This is our factory method final rank rank final suit suit should be real easy to implement this all <clears throat> all it's really going to do is it's going to say return card cache dot get and now we're going to use that method card key and we're going to pass it the rank and the suit Right, and that's it. So asking for the rank and the suit as a string from the map that we used, notice notice when we initialized the map with all of our cards in it, we used the card key method to map that string to a card. So now we're gonna take that same string to retrieve the value from back out of the map. And um, I would argue it's probably good to write code um, you could uh, write some additional code around here to um, protect against the case, protect if the rank or the suit do not exist, right? So if you miss from the cache, uh, it's a good idea to have some sort of behavior there. So, you know, in the simplest case, you could say is final card, card is equal to, and then you could say card cache, 
dot get rank and suit, and you could say, uh, or actually, I think you might actually be able to say card cache get get or default. You can give it a get or default value, uh, but really we don't want a default value. We want a behavior. And in that case, I may so so. Let's just play this out. So let's just say you get the value uh, from the card cache for the rank and the suit, and you. Um, uh, actually, you card key. You get you call card key on that. And if it's null, if let's say card is equal to not equal to null, then let's say return card. And if you get here, you can just say throw new runtime exception invalid card. Rank followed by space followed by um, suit. Okay, pretty basic. So there's more fancy things you can do there, but we won't uh, go over all of that. So now we have what we need here. Let's see. I think we're still getting a compiler. I forgot that. Okay. So now let's see. One more complaint in non-static method. Ah, so I needed to make get card. Given that it's a factory method, make it. There we go. And let's try to run that main. There you go. So a shuffled deck of cards. Um, you can go through it, all 52 cards in a deck. Um, there's more we can do here. We can actually say that um, card implements comparable so that if you didn't want to shuffle the deck and you wanted it to be ordered, you could provide a way to order it. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to come here to the card class very top, and what we're going to say is that uh, card implements comparable of a card, right? And of course, the compiler is going to complain. It's going to ask us to implement the method, and we're going to uh, just com implement the um, compare compare to method. Uh, oh, I said comparator. I'm sorry meant comparable. And here we're going to implement the method compare to. And it's going to be really simple. We're going to rely on third party libraries here. We're going to say final int uh, rank comparison is equal to integer dot compare uh, this dot rank dot get rank value. We haven't written that yet. And other card dot rank dot get rank value. Okay. And we need to write that the get rank value method on the enumeration. And uh, after we do that integer comparison, oops. After we do that integer comparison, the way the way well, the way that we're going to do that integer comparison is to say if the rank comparison, and we used integer.compare, we delegated the work to integer.compare that'll do the, that will compare those integers for us. We're going to say if the rank comparison is not equal, then return that rank comparison, right? So we found some difference between the two cards. But if they have the, if the two cards have the same rank, well then now we have to say integer, return integer.compare, and the only other thing that we have to compare, which is this.suit dot get suit value. Now, I know what you're thinking. Um, there isn't a standard way to compare suits in all card games. So you might choose not to 
uh, include the second part of the comparison in your version. But I'll, I'll show you, this is really just to demonstrate how you could compare multiple things in one compare to method. So I'm going to say this.suit.get suit value, right? So that's going to be our tiebreaker. And uh, so we can come here into our enumeration and we can say public int get rank value, return this dot rank value, and public int get suit value, and we're going to return this dot suit value, which doesn't exist yet, and what we're going to say is, uh, let me see, uh, private final int suit value, and we're going to say suit, suit. So we're going to say suits take a suit value. This dot suit value is equal to suit value. And now the last step is to say that a diamond has the lowest, clubs has the two, hearts has three. Again, this isn't standard across all card games, so you may choose not to use this. Um, but you know, I just wanted to again show you how you could do this with multiple. Uh, so right. So there we go with those two things. That should do it. Let's see. Yeah. So now, now, if we didn't shuffle the deck, if I commented that out and we reran the program, we should see that proper ordering. Ace of spades, king of spades, queen of spades, jack of spades, right now, 10 of spades, 9 of spades. Oh, actually, that's not quite right. That's not quite right. All right, so that's not right. So I found out what I did wrong here. I need to say, in the tiebreaker, I should say this dot suit get suit value and other card suit dot get suit value. And now, in the deck, instead of shuffling, I could have said collections dot sort my deck cards. And if I rerun the program, then you'll see that it's actually sorted correctly now. Ace of spades, ace of hearts, ace of clubs, ace of diamonds. Then king of spades, king of hearts, king of clubs, king of diamonds. So you can see here, in about 150 lines of source code, we were able to make a deck of cards. And I would argue it's fairly easy to reason through the source code. Uh, and it, there's really only one public API that um, we should be exposing to our end user, which is deal. And we can call deal any number of times, um, and it should behave safely. You could have made the behavior, you could change the behavior such that deal throws an exception when the deal is empty. Um, that's really up to you. So in the future, we may use this deck class if we want to make some card games. Anyway, thanks for your time. Uh, please do uh, subscribe and like the videos, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next.